Hello, it's Alex here from alexfergus.com and today it is the 23rd of March 2018, which means that Aura Ring, the new Aura Ring, ships next month. April 2018 was the shipping date. So, uh, as I cover the Aura Ring and have a lot of reviews and blogs and, and you may be on one of these pages right now when you're watching this, um, I get a lot of questions, uh, you know, is it going to do this? What happens here? What feature will, will it be able to do this? You know, all these sort of things. In fact, I have a lot of them myself. So I decided, you know what, let's reach out to Aura uh, and ask these questions. And I know there's a lot of people who have pre-ordered and they're waiting, but they still want to know these things. You know, when's it going to ship? What's going to happen with the size and rings, etc. And then there's a few people who haven't pre-ordered because they're still trying to get a bit of information or a bit of clarity around a particular feature and stuff. So this video is for both of you. Uh, it's actually a lot of questions that came in through the audience. So thank you for those who did send through the questions. Um, and I've in, uh, arranged an interview with Chuck from Oaring, and he's very switched on when it comes to the Oaring. He knows it inside out. Uh, and he's very good with customer support and relations. So he knows what questions are coming through and what people are wanting. So he was a perfect guy to interview. Um, I will mention that the interview wasn't the best quality. There was a little bit of static. Uh, I we had to do it through my phone and through Wi-Fi. Facebook, it was a Facebook live video, but unfortunately you can't combine, uh, have two people on at the same time if you're doing it through the Facebook desktop version. So we had to do it on our mobile. So sound quality is not the best. Uh, video quality is nothing special, but nor is this, so that's okay. Um, but it's it's you, you can get the information fine. But I do apologize for the the odd crackle and the odd static. Um, so yeah, it's it's a really good video. We cover all sorts of topics from you know when's it going to ship, what's going to happen with sizing rings, uh, can you track um, heart rate, heart rate variability, body temperature throughout the day, uh, what's been upgraded. Uh, what cool things can we expect to see in the app? Um, Chuck revealed a little bit about the redesign of the app. Um, yeah, all sorts of things. So we covered it all. So stay tuned. Uh, but before we do get into that, I do want to mention that Aura have given me an exclusive uh, discount code. So this is for pre-orders only, and it's only valid for less than two weeks. It's like a week and a half. I think it goes up to about the 3rd of April, if that. In fact, I may be wrong on that. I think it only goes to the end of the month. So you've probably got one week to use it. Um, it's my last name, Fergus, F-E-R-G-U-S. That's going to save you, now wait for this, this is huge. It's going to save you $100 US off the pre-order price, which is like over 30% discount, which is insane. Um, so it's a limited time. So I do apologize if you're watching this and you know, maybe in um, April and that coupon's no longer valid. I do apologize. However, still use that coupon code, Fergus, because it will give you a discount. It might only be a few percent or 10% or something. I'm not too sure. But if you're lucky enough to be watching this at the end of March 2018, um, you're going to be saving $100 on your pre-order, which is huge. So again, uh, watch this video if you're you know unsure about whether to order or not. Watch this video. Hopefully, you'll get a bit more clarity. Check out my review, the Oring review uh, at alexfergus.com, and check out my preview for the new Oring. Uh, everything you need to know about the new Oring uh, on my website as well. Ask me questions if you have any, and then um, if you do want to go ahead with the pre-order, use that coupon code, save a ton of money. Heads up, I do get a slight cut from that. Uh, it pays for my time and doing all this sort of stuff. But if you don't want to do that, then I totally understand. And um, you don't have to use the code. You just have to pay a little bit more money. But anyway, uh, I'm going to leave it there. Enjoy this video. And again, apologies for the audio. Um, and happy watching. And yeah, talk soon. All right. Well, someone said it's good. So that's good. Okay. So Chuck is the VP of sales with Oring uh, and has been heavily involved in the launch and um what well, technical side of things getting uh, customer support um with the new o-ring and i know for a fact that he's very clued up around uh the guts of this ring the the technical hardware side of things but also the app uh and the the new features that are going to be coming out so he's a per perfect guy to have on this call and i do have a list of questions here so we're gonna we're gonna start working through them and like i said uh for those of you listening or watching um, feel, feel free to, uh, someone said we should put it in landscape mode. Feel free to type your questions in. So if I put this on landscape, what happens? It's too late. We're going to start. We're going to start watching. All right. So first question is obviously, uh, it's the, the big one. What's the latest on the shipping date for the new rings? 
Uh, we're still on track for next month. Uh, there are no showstoppers at this point. Nice. So we, we're talking next month, like the first week, mid, mid, uh, mid month, end of month. No comment. <laughs> no comment. No, All right. It'll be, it'll be, a, uh, it'll be in the second half of the month. If, if nothing okay. else, you know, we don't have any showstoppers and we'll be, uh, shipping against the pre-orders well into May and mm -hmm. before we're starting to build up inventory, most likely. All right, and then so it's still going to be that two uh, two tier sort of approach to the shipping, like where you have uh, like not all countries are going to be shipped to, right? From day one, then, there's a list should be on a blog post of the website as to which countries we're shipping to initially. Initially, okay, so we, cool. All we right, have, uh, I think that we've put out three or four shipping updates, and there's a lot of good information in those, and they're stored under the blog section of our website. Okay, cool. So for those of you who want to know uh, more details around that, head, head, head over to the Oring website. Uh, next question, what about the sizing kits? When, when are they going to be shipped out? Uh, there will be a, another shipping update coming out. I believe those will start shipping uh, very early next month. And that'll, but that'll be clarified in the next shipping update. They're still trying to work out the final details. Okay. All right, cool. So obviously that will be shipped out and then the customer will, will, will trial the sizes and then let you yeah. guys know what, what I know size you have a question about this. You know, can you use the existing sizing kits for the Gen yep. 1? Uh, mm -hmm. I've always worn a size 9. This is a size 10. <laughs> the new right. range. So it's not as tight as, um, quite as tight as the 9 is of the traditional rings. I think the, the titanium Gen 2 rings will be, you know, closer to U.S. sizes because the ceramic moldings weren't exact in some cases on the Gen okay. 1. So pretty, so pretty much wait until you get the sizing kits and, yeah, and but take I also the size from there. I wouldn't have recommended this with the first generation ring, but with the new ring, I think you could safely go to a jewelry store and be sized up mm -hmm. and with this, you know, if they have the physical sizing rings, and that would probably be pretty, pretty darn close. Okay, cool. All right. Um, so last year when I was with you at, in, in Helsinki uh, Slush, I had to play around with the, the uh, better version of the new app. Uh, so it had the white sort of background and everything like that. It was a complete overhaul. Have there been any changes to the app? Um, since then, uh, or is that still pretty uh, pretty good shot of, of what's going to be released? Yeah, we have we've actually uh, redone. Uh, and there are, I believe, there are pictures on the website now of what the main screen looks like. Uh, mm -hmm. We moved to a, a a more neutral background. It's not white, uh, so it's a lot easier on the eyes, especially in the morning when you first wake up to check your scores. Uh, and mm -hmm. it also presents the data differently. Instead of just throwing the three major scores on the front, it's more like a, a view of your day. So your recovery score, front and center, uh, your uh, exercise goal, movement goal for the day. And as you build up you know, against that goal, that will be updated every time you sink. Um, restful periods during the day, if you have any, uh, where it records heart rate, those will show up on that page. And then you have the sub pages uh, for sleep, recovery, movement, um, and then uh, trends. Some of the trending graphs that are on the cloud will be in the app also. Nice. All right. Well, that's cool. I'm, I'm excited to see more of that because, um, yeah, like the app that I saw a couple of months ago w was quite, uh, quite, quite different. So it sounds yeah. like it's going to be even different again. So when's the app going to ship? Will that ship out the same time as the new rings or will that be launched prior to the ring shipping? Uh, same time as the new ring shipping. So it'll be sometime next month. And then for those users who don't upgrade to the new um, ring, will they be able to use that new app or is it specifically exclusively for the, uh, for the new ring? No, it, the same app will be used for both rings, the original and the new ring. Uh, but mm -hmm. they may, some feature sets that aren't supported uh, in the old ring, the original ring, just because okay. they don't have the hardware to handle them. Yeah. 
So then, um, with the app, how's how's development going with the app? Like, do you expect all the features to be released on day one, or are some of the features kind of still in in uh, development mode and and might not come out until later in the year? Uh, not all features that we've discussed on the website or in um, on social media will be available day one. We'll be working mm -hmm. on them throughout the summer and into the fall, most likely. Okay, cool. Yeah, and that's kind of what happened with the very first ring, what, two odd years ago. Like, uh, every every few months, you got an app update and it unlocked another feature, and it was it was actually right. pretty cool. It was like, uh, it, it seemed to just, it was like you got a new ring every few months because it was a new feature. Um, all, the, all, right, all so, the functionality sorry. that was in the, you know, the original app that people are using will certainly be there and uh, hopefully a few new features. But, okay, you know, cool. a, lot, uh, a lot of moving parts still, so. All right, I'm excited to see that. So um, obviously there's a big emphasis on um, circadian rhythm alignment and uh, trying to find your, you know, your ideal circadian rhythm, bedtime, sleep times. Uh, I've heard Pitts today talk about that and I've seen it mentioned on the website. So is that going to be incorporated into the app? Like is the app going to say, look, your ideal bedtime is between 9 and 10 o'clock, for instance? Yes, so we... in. Uh... The beta app that I think you've seen uh, under the, I think it's actually under the readiness screen, but maybe, anyway, it's on one of the screens, but yeah, so it's sort of like a heat plot diagram. Mm -hmm. So pretty easy for us to look at your past data and look at, you know, what time you went to bed each night and what the sleep score was the next morning for that night. And from that, we can use a heat plot diagram or something like that to zero in on when you got your highest scores related to when you went to bed. So that's the beginning of circadian alignment. Uh, so it's, you know, it, it basically will help you identify for your circadian rhythms, you should go to bed, say at 10, 10 at night or something like that, between 10, 10 and 10, 30. Yeah, right, that's really cool. And then what about wake times? Will it look at that as well? Like, will it give recommended wake times? Um, that, uh, yeah, I mean, yes. I mean, we haven't started to look at that yet um, because it's a little more complicated because then you have to look at how restorative your sleep was from all the various mm -hmm. intrusions you look at. And so we could certainly do that. But the problem is, is most people, their job may not be flexible enough <laughs> to allow for that. So you've got to have, a, you know, it, it's definitely something we could look at, but it's not something we is like on the immediate roadmap. Fair enough. All right, and then what about um, what about using the app to have like uh, uh, like will the app sync with the ring and sort of help you wake up in the light sleep phases or anything like that? I know there's a few tools floating around that yeah. specifically do that. Uh, is that something that you guys are looking at? Well, so it's sort of yes, we could certainly do that, it, and it wouldn't be that difficult. Um, but there are two things. One, we uh, one of the advantages of the ring is it's it's pretty low EMF. If you do nothing with the airplane mode, it's on less than two minutes a day. And part of that mm -hmm. is we Bluetooth while you're sleeping. So to affect uh, doing something like that, you'd have to have the ring being being pinged with the phone like all the time. Yeah. And people want the Bluetooth firing off you know, every five mm -hmm. minutes, 3 a.m. to whenever they wake up. And the other thing yeah. is... Uh, well, I know a lot of, um, of our users actually put their ring manually into airplane mode. And so you can't talk to the phone. You can't, mm -hmm. there's no support to know when to wake you up. Yeah. Yeah. Even if that function was there, I, I personally wouldn't use it for those probably reasons. I just wouldn't, right. I don't know, like having that Bluetooth pulsing or not. Um, no. But yeah, it's going to be interesting, like with your, I mean, look, if, if, if you guys can, or if the ring can sort of, help determine the ideal sleep time, bedtime, and then from there, you're naturally waking at a good, you know, time anyway. Um, you know what I mean? Like, focus on the sleep time and everything else should take care of itself. Real quick, before I continue with these questions, uh, I, I'm just getting a little bit of, like, static coming through on my end. Uh, can you hear me okay, Chuck? I hear you fine. And everyone listening, there's no issues uh, with the audio? 
well, no one's saying anything. So either, either they can't hear me or uh, there's no issues. All right. Well, as long as you can hear me, good. So that's the main thing. Um, all right. So next question, uh, real-time tracking. So I've seen this mentioned a few times. I know we've spoken about it uh, in previous um, – Someone said, sorry, I'm just seeing this comments coming through. Someone said it's a bit crackly and someone said they can hear me fine. Uh, I'm just going to pull these headphones out. I'll see if it's. All right. So, um, yeah, I'm still getting the crackly without the headphones. Uh, anyway, so I know we've spoken about this a little bit earlier uh, about the real time tracking component. I know what it might be. It might be this microphone that's right next to me. Let's see if that helps. Um, what can you just give us a bit of an update uh, on the real time tracking, com you know, aspects or features of the UI? Right. Well, I think it's been, I know, in the support channels, been asked a lot about this. We use infrared sensors. Infrared sensors do not like movement. Uh, imagine every time you move your hand or your fingers fairly aggressively, the amount of extra blood flow through the arteries we're monitoring. Uh, it creates a lot of noise. So with the new ring, uh, it's got improved infrared sensors. So we truly believe, and we need to test this out more, that we can actually tolerate uh, a lot more movement than with the first ring. So our, mm -hmm. our estimation is that over the course of 24 hours, we believe we can activate the sensors up to uh, 14 hours out of the 24-hour period. So that's oh. all of sleep, unless you're extremely restless in a, a piece of the day. And those are times when you're less active. You certainly can't be active and expect those to be turned on. Okay, got it. So then like, uh, will there be a, an option to like check your HRV or your heart rate on demand? Like if, you're just, if, you, if you just wanna see your heart rate at this point in time, is that gonna be yeah, a... You just uh, chill, you know, don't be active, just sit still and the sensors will turn on and those will show as restful periods in the app. It'll show your heart rate. And if you're rest, uh, still long enough, it'll show your HRV because we need a five minute sample for HRV. Got it. All right. So you just relax, open up the app, wait a few minutes and then you'll see the data. That's cool. Yeah. All right. Uh, what else we got here? Um, will there be, so with those, with that sort of option, uh, being able to track your your heart rate, heart rate variability and stuff, will there be the option to to work in sort of some rules or like some triggers and say, you know, like if my heart rate variability drops below this number, like the alarm, will, the app will beep or anything like that. Is that something you guys have looked at? Uh, it's not something I've heard discussed. Uh, mm -hmm. I assume the use cases for health issues or overtraining perhaps <laughs> i don't know or stressed i suppose yeah yeah i suppose if, if someone was doing some like meditation or something can they yeah they we, the app open? we haven't fully fleshed out i mean when you bring up meditation or something like that um, that is a use case we're going to be supporting the app where you can um advertly you know turn the sensors on uh mm. going to meditate i don't know how that'll be implemented per se in the app but there will be a conscious activation of the sensors, turning them on. Got it. So Kevin's just asked, uh, if it's set by relaxing, does that mean I can't check it, check it while training? And yeah, I think Chuck was sort of saying, like, it's, it's based on movement, you know, you're, so if you're moving a lot, then it's not going to be able to take a reading. Is that that's yeah. correct, right? Yeah. And one of the things I look at is, I mean, you know, I, I'm somewhat interested in heart rate while I'm training, but Heart rate's fairly flawed because of drift and other things. I'm a runner. Um, but is when you stop exercising, is how long, how far does your heart rate come down in 90 seconds? Um, and you could do that with the ring, certainly. But Yeah, right. So I know, like, uh, I know some other apps, like the Elite HRV app had that right. function where you'd finish your intervals or your run or whatever, and then you'd hit that recovery mode. And it would track all the data and, and spit out a recovery score. So, yeah, right, I can I can see. And, and then plus, to be honest, I mean, I don't know. I'm not I'm not into you know too much aerobic based training like you would be. But when I did used to do some sort of rowing and, and cycling, I you know I'd use the specialized tools and apps for those right. for those uh, th things. You know, like I, I me personally, I just viewed the aura 
as my sleep recovery sort of wellness wearable. But then if I wanted to go out and, and run a marathon, I'd probably strap on, you know, a Garmin or a Polar that had the GPS exactly. and, you know, yeah, you a cadence and all that. Pick the best tool for the, jo the job, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. So what else we got here? Uh, so the inactivity alerts, I know that's in the current ring, but again, you have to yeah. have Bluetooth on. Uh, and it will give you a little reminder saying, hey, you know, you know you've been inactive for a while. Um, great feature. But someone asked if those alerts will be adjustable, you know, rather than saying, you know, you haven't moved for an hour, maybe you can change it to like two hours or, or 45 minutes or something. Do you know if that will be adjustable? Uh, I haven't heard that discussed, but we have talked more generally about um, personalization. And I don't know where this is in the roadmap, but for instance, uh, you know, like some of the apps, you can specify you're anything from a couch potato to an elite athlete, and that that would actually trigger different goal settings per day, right? Mm -hmm. And so it wouldn't just be based on your age, gender, you know, that sort of thing. And, and you could also have, you know, in that kind of thing is allow people to set triggers for like how long do I sit and how long should I move before I'm good to sit again kind of thing but I'm not sure when that'll be put in but that is something we've spoke, spoken about okay cool and uh, so I had a question come in it was about oh, it was a couple of weeks ago now it was uh, in regards to the cloud app and so they asked you know when is the cloud uh, dashboard going to be out of better version and are there more features in the pipeline and i know since then there's been quite a big update on the cloud yeah. um i had a play around the other day and it is pretty cool but is that is that i know with software you're always adding new features and new tweaks and everything <laughs> like that but but is that something that um is the cloud at a, is the cloud dash at a point now where you're you know you guys are happy with it for for launch day or are there still some big big features in the pipeline yeah, uh, well, yes, it's not going to change a lot before before launch date. Uh, you know, looking out later in the year, we'll at some point uh, put the proverbial lipstick on it, you know, make it a little bit prettier, maybe change some of the navigation um, and continue to add more features. Uh, you know, some of the stuff that, um, you know, will support in the app, like people have asked, uh, you know, can you add notes? And yes, in the, the upcoming app, you'll be able to add notes. Um, is making sure those notes make it up to the cloud and allowing you to add notes in the cloud that would actually show in the app, you know, that kind of stuff. And so that some of that stuff will happen later. So yes, we'll keep we'll keep uh, improving the cloud. But is it still right. available? I don't know if it bothers you, put duct tape over your screen. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think, um, yeah, that question did come in a while back, well, not a while back, it was a good month or so ago. Uh, and I feel like, um, you know, I mean, I've been using the cloud since day one and uh, it, it's perfectly functional. So, yeah. but it keeps getting better and better. So someone just yeah. asked, um, gonna use your code, how do I size the ring? So yeah, you must've missed that. What will happen is when you place a pre-order, uh, you'll get sent out a sizing kit and then you you test, you know, go through those uh, sizing rings, you know, sleep on them, use them for a day or two, and then you'll let Aura know what, what size you want, and then they'll ship you the, the uh, end product when it's ready. So you don't have to go to a jeweler, but you could if you wanted to. But yes, just there are really, to really three options that we've discussed. One is we're going to send you a kit. Two, you go to a jeweler because we truly believe the new ring is 100% accurate to a U.S. sizing. Or three, send you a cat file and let you 3D print them if you have a 3D printer. Yeah, right. Uh, no, people have asked for that, so it's pretty simple. Yeah, I suppose it would save you guys a bit of money as well, not having to ship right. out uh, ship right. out things. All right. Um so going back to the app real quick, so I think I know the answer to this one, but I'll ask it anyway. Um so with the app overhaul, have the personal messages uh that the app spits out, have they all been refreshed or added to or um are they all yes, the same yes and yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that, that, that was first well, it was a start, right, is trying to get yep. out some guidance, and it was fairly static. And so we will be uh, making a leap, a big leap forward in personalizing those messages to the user, you going through their data historically and trying to provide gu better guidance. And so, yes, that will be improved. Okay, so awesome. Um, <laughs> yeah. Sorry? 
it's a, it's going to be a complete overhaul architecturally. All right, no, I look forward to seeing it. Uh, someone asked, will there be more sports listed in the activity page? Uh, yes, I mean, we'll continue to add them as people request them. Uh, you know, I, I mean, I don't know, maybe even badminton's in there because one of our iOS developers plays badminton. But, you know, if, if somebody has something, that we'll add it. Okay, awesome. Um, and I know we've kind of covered this, and I know the answer. Uh, but I'm going to ask it anyway, because it seems to be one of those questions that like just always comes up and it was in regards to tracking your, um, tracking activity. Does the, uh, will the new ring use heart rate to help determine, you know, activity intensities and levels? And I know we've already covered this, but you know, maybe just, just well, no, but, refresh but it for those people. Yeah. I don't want to go down this rabbit hole, but I'm very passionate about this topic. Heart rate is not the way to track intensity of an activity. I know some people would disagree with that. Uh, it has a lot of flaws, not the inaccuracy of most of the devices that track heart rate, even chest straps. Um, but anyway, no, we're not going to be using heart rate to gauge the intensity of the activity. Uh, cool. there's most, most science uses metabolic equivalence. It's well established in research. It works fine. And um, will you still recommend, like if I go out and do a strength workout, would you still recommend logging that manually into the app? Or do you think with the new sensors that it'll be able to figure out what, you, what you're doing or how, right. you go, what, how are you guys approaching that? So I would still log the activity in the app. And the reason is the new ring has a gyro. Mm -hmm. And the big thing that allows you to do is it makes it easier if you train the device and you have to train it for each movement that you do in the gym. And I think the catalog is 140 movements. And you, so you have to write basically little snippets of code that goes in the firmware to say, okay, this person's doing a uh, deadlift. And so we, we will work on that over time. Uh, but it's it's a big project, and if you look at even the big players like Fitbit or Garmin, uh, they're they're very slowly adding movements uh, to their watches because it takes a lot of time and effort. Okay, well, that's cool. Um, so this is a question that came through, and it's actually something that I don't know the answer to, and should have asked myself a long time ago. But regarding the temperature graph in the app, um, what is the baseline figure? So, like, you know, for, for for, uh, it's your this morning, I, I, sorry. It's your baseline. So, it's but what your... is that? Is it is it a predetermined number, or is it an average, or like well, it, like it the, looks... the zero? So once you take the ring into use, over the first one or two weeks, we establish what your norm is, mm -hmm. right? And then from there, we start showing the deviations against that baseline norm normal for you, because not everybody's ninety eight point six. Fahrenheit, whatever that is in Celsius. Uh, it, it, so the normal is your normal. That's your baseline. And is that updating? Like, is that a two-week rolling average or two uh, months? Or is it from well, day I mean, one? I don't know the exact answer to that. And we can certainly ask the science department because that might be a good thing to clarify. Uh, in a blog yeah. Post. Yeah. So, no, I think it would be. Yeah. So take I know, um, yeah. So I, I mean, I think... You know, I think it, it must, but I don't know how often. I mean, I know if you take a new ring into use, like if yours broke and you got a replacement, uh, the, the temperature sensors are, are calibrated and validated, but there could be some minute differences. And so it would yeah. have to baseline based on that. You know, that'd be the smart way to do it, but we should confirm that. Okay. All right. Well, yeah, maybe maybe that's something you guys can look into and spit out yeah. a blog post on and look at the algorithms and that, because that would be interesting. I know, um, like, I, I spend a lot of time tracking body temperature, and I do with all my clients as well. Um, so when you see the, the differences, you know, the changes, I'm like, oh, that's cool. But I'm like, what what's the change based on? Is it like the day before? Is it the last month? So, yeah, yeah. That, that's uh, that's a good answer, and um, I look forward to learning a bit more about that. Uh, I do okay. Baseline. I do know that Sorry? off your. I do know that it is the deviation off your baseline. Got it. Okay. Um, so I know you guys launched the uh, API a while ago. Are there any um, apps that have been working with you guys that are going to 
you know, coming out saying we, we plug in with Aura Ring uh, with the new, the, when the new uh, when the new ring comes out or um, later we, on this we, year, is it? Yeah, we, we've got uh, several uh, independent organizations that are pulling off the API. Uh, then there's at least one uh, sort of uh, consolidator of APIs called Human API that is pulling okay. data from our site. Oh, cool. So, so like, what do they do? What's that? What, what, what do they do with that data? Do they have a... So, so what they would do is, so uh, give, you, give you a real life example. There's a, uh, a website, I came out with an app, it's called Heads Up Health. Yep. And Heads Up Health is trying to create a dashboard where you can make really cool correlations between doctor's report, you know, records, lab reports from blood testing, um, various wearables, scales, food loggers, all this stuff. And so some of the stuff, Heads Up Health pulls directly from the company and other companies, they pull the data from Human API because Human Got API it. plugins from like Garmin, Fitbit, Strava, mm -hmm. Matt, My Fitness, My Fitness Pal, Withings or Nokia Scales, um, LabCorp, uh, um, Quest, Lab, you know, Blood Mark. So all kinds of like that. So it makes it easy for someone like Heads Up Health to develop a really cool application. They don't have to worry about dealing with Aura and all these other companies. Okay, cool. Um, all right, that's good. And then, so another question here, and again, we've kind of covered this, uh, but I'll ask it anyway. Uh, so will the new app tell me a bit more about what is going on with my body? And uh, for anyone that hasn't used Aura Ring, the Aura Ring app before, I mean, that's, that's exactly what the Aura Ring does. I mean, it's telling you when you're overstressed, when you're sleep deprived, um, you know, your body temperature is fluctuating. Um, it's telling you all those things. And Chuck's already explained how it's going to look more at circadian rhythm and help you with, you know, ideal sleep times and stuff. But is there anything, for, for those of us who have been using the Ring, are familiar with it, is there anything else maybe that will be coming out that, you know, is going to tell us right. about our so, body? Yeah, so uh, adding notes is helpful because one of the things, you know, we're measuring your body your body responses, right, while you're sleeping. And we can learn a lot of interesting things, but the big missing piece is we don't know what you actually did, you know, the mm -hmm. couple hours where you fell asleep. And so adding notes to your, uh, to the app or in the cloud eventually will help us to, you know, look at your past data and, and help you find correlations um, on why maybe you, how you might be able to improve your sleep, make it more restorative. Um, the other thing is we're, we're looking at, um, and this won't be available day one, but is developing sort of what we call programs. So there might be a, like a short little um, citizen experiment, right? So you, you say, okay, yeah, I want to, I'll do this. Like we tell you, hey, give up coffee for two weeks and see what that does to your sleep and recovery. Just give it up. And, you know, things like that. Some of them will be fun. But hopefully from these, people could learn of things they can change, lifestyle choices they can make that will improve their sleep in their life. Yeah, you know. yeah that's... Um, I'm divine. That's, yeah, it's something I, I'm really looking forward to, uh, you know, because I know that the ring is so accurate and pulling in all this amazing data, but then being able to add in your own um, data as well on top of that. Right. And uh, also, I mean, people just like learning about their body and learning, you know, what, how things like giving up coffee impacts their sleep and stuff. Some people don't really connect the two until there's an app or a device telling you, hey, look, when you've given up uh, coffee, this is what's happening to your sleep. So I think those little, those little project ideas and stuff will, will, be, will be really cool. Uh, and especially yeah. seeing the data. The data is going to be like, you know, it'll be awesome, I, I, especially for uh, number uh, geeks or, you know, data nerds like like myself right. will be like sweet it would really um it would be interesting to see that sort of stuff uh okay so another question um have you personally tested prototypes of the ring and if so what are your feelings around the ring yes i have <laughs> i like it i mean i you know i'll be honest the the original war ring is a conversation starter mm. so you know when you're in public people will notice this more than they'll notice this but despite that, I mean, I like this smaller size, especially if you have pants on, you go to put your hand in your pocket, you know, yeah. it doesn't fit, and that's the most obnoxious things. 
I find I hit it less on like tables and other objects when I'm moving <laughs> because you just don't yeah. have the at the top. Uh, yeah. Other than that, it's you know it's it's a similar experience. I mean, you know, still getting the rich sleep data and the recovery score and and uh, you know the tracking during the day, moving around, which I think is important. And then what about battery life? Are you getting the week of oh, battery life? It, it, it's easily a week. Yeah. yeah really. It's, a week is, is no problem. Wow, that's cool. That's yeah. very cool. So for those of you who don't have the Gen One ring, you're getting what two days, maybe three at best. Yeah, uh, you life. get two nights sleep for the first. Yeah, gen, right? yeah, yeah. So I mean, I've always just got up every morning and and charged it first thing in the morning. That's that's just the routine that I use. But every now and then, you know, like you, you go to a friend's or you go away for the weekend and you forget to take your charger. It's like, oh, damn it. So right. um, having that week-long uh, doorbell just made, having that week-long um, battery life is going to be pretty cool. So have you have you trained with it? Like, you know, have you tested it in the elements like saunas or like weightlifting or anything like that? Uh, <laughs> you talked to the wrong guy for weightlifting. I <laughs> Or we need to talk. <laughs> You're gonna get me on a plan, but uh, I haven't personally lifted with it on. I think uh, a couple of our employees have, um, but even though it's not the ceramic, it's titanium. I still wouldn't lift heavy without at least gloves on, uh, just because metal pinching your fingers, scratching the titanium. Uh, so we have to take it off or you know hang it around your neck, kind of thing. On a uh, anyway, but um, yeah. yeah. I've been up in uh, the the mountains of New Hampshire just last weekend, and uh, it was six degrees Fahrenheit. I don't know what that is in Celsius, but it was cold, and the wind cold. was blowing sixty miles an hour. Uh, we get some of the worst weather in the U.S. in the White Mountains of New Hampshire, believe it or not. And so, yeah, I went up there. It was fine. It did fine. Okay, that's good, and no doubt it will work fine in saunas, given that the fit- lead development team. Uh, <laughs> all finish <laughs> that's right <laughs> yes. um but yeah it's interesting you say that around the weightlifting because uh for those of you who have seen my videos and read my reviews like i use my ring uh my o-ring like every day and i train with it you know i've done some massive deadlifts with it and it hasn't even scratched and it's over two years old um you've got form. The, <laughs> sorry you have good form i guess yeah, I must do. But the funny thing is, uh, I'm now wearing this stainless steel wedding oh, band. I got, I got married like a couple of weeks ago, five weeks ago now. And um, I can't train with it. I have to take it off. It yes. does exactly what you said. Like it pinches and everything. So, yeah, it'll be interesting to see what um, what the new one's like. But that's cool. Uh, and then the last question, and I know you've answered this um, uh, personally to me, but I'll ask it for the for the crowd. Uh, are there any plans to support multiple rings that are connected to the one app? So, for instance, someone has multiple rings, you know, they've got a rose gold one they want to wear with their dress, and then they've got their silver ring for day-to-day use. Will they be able to connect them both to the same app? Uh, not in the current plans. I, I think that's uh, something we should work towards uh, because I know other companies can do this. Um, I Garmin, for instance, I have way too many garments and I can connect them the same half without a problem. So mm-hmm. it's something we should definitely look into because for the obvious reasons now with the, the variety of styles and colors, uh, and it might even grow through partnerships into other things, uh, designs that we should definitely look at that. We'll yeah. Cool. Up- and I suppose also, sorry, I suppose that um, if anyone then wanted to keep using their gen one and then also have the gen two, It'll be the same thing, right? You'll have to have two. Well, it won't. It won't merge the data, or yeah. I mean, it won't connect to the same app, will it? No, no, and that, yeah, and that's. And again, if we did it right, we'd do it like Garmin's done. Garmin, you can switch between any of their wearables, and as long as you see, I'm using this one now, it still populates everything. In the my day view that they have, steps, mileage, stress level, whatever. Mm-hmm. It works fine. So that's the way we do it. And again, I, we've had people request us, even with the first generation rings, uh, one use case, the person didn't want to miss any data. So they had mm-hmm. two rings. So they put one on the charger <laughs> to put <one> where. 
Oh my so, God. Well, wow. yeah, I know. I know. So anyway, but yes, with the styles and stuff, I think it's something we should definitely do, but it's, it's not something we'll be offering in the immediate future. I know that for sure. So I'll, I'll go into the list. <laughs> cool. All right. Well, it sounds like um, there's going to be some really cool new features, especially around the app. And then as the months and years go by, I'm sure there's only going to be more and more cool new things coming out. It sounds like you've got a lot of, a lot of potential pathways to go down. So that that's exciting. Um, yeah. I mean, that's, that's everything I had and I've, uh, I've been through the questions that have come through. Uh, and yep. I think we've covered everything. If anyone has any final questions before we wrap up, um, let me know. Oh, here, here was one. Uh, is it possible to check the temperature and pulse um, during the day, no. like after a meal? Yes, no. it should probably uh, tell people. Um, your skin temperature is only the same as your core temperature while you're sleeping. This is part of your nocturnal biology. So yeah. you cannot check your core temperature from your skin during the day. It just will not work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you just have to use a $2 thermometer for, uh, that's for right. that, unfortunately. Well, they have, uh, can, they have other ones you can use now that are digital that I think you can just shine them in your ear and get a pretty good temperature. Yeah, it's like infrared ones and yeah, yeah. so many. Um, yeah. Uh, so someone asked, can you add notes to the net? We, app, we covered that. Yeah. Uh, is there a money back guarantee policy? I'm 30 assuming days. there is. Yes, 30, yeah, days. 30 days. Yeah. All right. Uh, and I'm just going through everything else. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. I don't think there's any other questions. If anyone has any final questions before we go, please send them through right away. Otherwise, um, yeah, I think that's it. I mean, is there anything else you wanted to add, Chuck? No, I th think I'm good. Uh, okay, cool. All right. Well, thank you for your time and enjoy yeah. the rest of your evening. And I do apologize for the delay and the technical issues getting started. Right. Uh, it's the joys of Facebook Live. Um, but yeah, we yeah. got there in the but, end. Yeah. But anyway, uh, if you if you do get questions after this, just ping me and I'll look at them and answer them on your Okay, your yeah. So, yeah. All right. So if anyone's listening, you know, even put them in the comment box on here. Um, or send them through to me and I'll do my best to get them answered and, and forward them through to Chuck. Uh, so yeah, again, um, Alex here from alexvegas.com. Chuck from, where, where are you based in, at the moment? Uh, uh, just outside of uh, Norwich, Vermont. Okay, uh, so he's in the US. West, yeah. Okay, so nice. So uh, Chuck, yep, yeah, from Oaring. So thanks again. And um, so the, the the big question that I got, uh, when is it going to ship? We still don't have a definitive answer on that, but it'll be sometime next month. Uh, and for the, <laughs> so it's getting closer. Every day it's getting closer. But for those of you who um, have ordered, I'm told the uh, sizing kits will be sent out later. Um, and for those of you who haven't ordered, you still got time, and there is a pretty good special going on at the moment, a pre-order special. In fact, uh, Aura have given me a $100 off coupon code, which is just my last name, which will save you save you 100 bucks, which is quite impressive. And that's only valid. I need to check how long it's valid for, but it's not long, like maybe a couple of days it, max. So Yeah, I, I think it's no, but, no, certainly no longer than the end of the month. Um, okay, yes. Yeah. So there we and go. I would point out for people, too, that at some point prior to shipping, we are most likely going to stop taking pre-orders uh, just because of planning our manufacturing capacity and all that stuff. So if you want to order, I would get it in now soon. Yeah. Otherwise, you might be waiting <laughs> a long time. All your friends well, might have the right. Until, you know, later in May when we have inventory to right. Right. Okay. So yeah. you won't, you might not get it on day one or something like that. Um, yeah. Plus you won't, you won't get the savings because it's, it's a huge saving. It's like 30% yes. off, which yeah. is kind of insane. I mean, I understood that epic deal, uh, you know, on day one with the launch, but having it so close to, um, to shipping day, I'm like, man, it's quite impressive. So anyway, uh, check that out. If you have any questions, let me know. If you've enjoyed this, hit like. Make sure you head over to um, alexfergus.com where I've got a ton more information, videos. I've got hands-on videos with the ring. And also go to the Aura website because they've got it's a really good resource there where a lot of these questions that we asked, uh, I know have already been answered in great detail on their blogs. 
Um, so make sure you hit over there as well because there's, there's awesome information. And subscribe to the email list because they're, they're sending out shipping updates and various other updates as well. So check those resources out. I'm going to wrap it up here. Thanks again, Chuck. And thanks for Great. all of you guys who, who were listening and asked the questions. Right. Signing up. Bye-bye. Take care.